Hello, and welcome to our new workshop. This workshop comprises the third part of the multi-part workshop series on the subject of QNAP NAS data backup and describes the migration of an existing database to a new QNAP NAS device. All the settings provided for this type of data backup have already been made in the first part of the workshop series under the second method. I add the direct link to the video in the description field. In order to import the data backup, I log into the QNAP interface as the first step. Then I go to Control Panel and select SQL Server under Applications. This server has to be activated first. For this, I put a tick next to Enable SQL Server and next to Enable TCP slash IP Networking and click on Apply. Changes will be applied now. This process may take a moment. After these have been applied, which is communicated to us by a small blue message, I can close this window beforehand. As the second step, I open the application, PHP My Admin, which has already been installed by me. If PHP My Admin has not yet been installed, you should install this application first. As the next step, enter the username and password, and then click on Go to log into the administration interface of the databases. As you can see on the left, there are no databases yet. Therefore, I now open my Windows Explorer with a text file from the first workshop part of the connection data of the database. Copy the database name and click on the tab at the top of the PHP My Admin interface with the label Databases. As the next step, I paste the database name I just copied into the corresponding input field under the label Create Database. Click on the right in the selection list and select the entry UTF-8MB4 Unicode CI and confirm the entry by clicking on Create. As you can see, the database schema for our paper office has been entered on the left. The next step is to create the user account. To do this, I go to the general PHP My Admin interface and select the User Accounts tab. Then click on Add User Account. I go back to my text file, copy the username, and paste it into the input field next to the designation Username. Make sure that Any Host is selected next to Host Name, as shown in the video. Now I open my text file again and copy the password. I add this password to the input field next to Password once and to Retype the second time. Select Check All in the Global Privileges area and confirm the entry with Go. After the user account has been created, a connection to the QNAP database must be established. For the data backup function, we recommend using MySQL Workbench, which is recommended for large databases. I will also include the direct download link for MySQL Workbench in the description below. After MySQL Workbench has been installed, I open it and get the following interface, as shown in the video. The first step is to establish a connection to the QNAP database. To do this, I click on the plus symbol next to My SQL Connections and, as the next step, enter a free name, for example, QNAP. The connection method remains the same, standard TCP slash IP. In the host name input field, I enter the IP address of the new QNAP NAS. Next to username, I enter the username from our text file and do the same with the password. Now I can test the connection and check whether the data have been entered correctly by clicking on Test Connection. So I can immediately see that the connection has been successfully established and confirm the message with OK. After the successful connection test, I save the configuration by clicking on OK. The connection that has just been saved is listed. I click it once with the left mouse button and the window with various editing tools opens. I would now like to integrate the data backup created in the first part of the workshop series. To do this, I click on the entry data import slash restore, mark the second radio button import from self-contained file and select the necessary data backup. To do this, I click on the selection button with three dots on the right, open the folder in which the data backups are saved and select the data backup that is relevant. After the file has been selected, 
we must define to which target schema it should be saved. To do this, I click in the selection list and select the database name, and click on Start Import. This process will take a moment depending on the size of the database. An Import Completed notification will appear when the import is complete, which in turn means that My SQL Workbench can be closed. The next step is to establish the database connection with the new QNAP device from PaperOffice, for which I first start PaperOffice and click on Options. Since PaperOffice is still connected to the old database, I disconnect it by clicking on Continue and Manage Database Connection, and after, disconnect the database connection. The connection is now disconnected, and I am redirected to the Login window, where I click on Continue. Now the connection to the new QNAP database has to be established. For this, I click on Start Database Manager and select the image QNAP NAS in the next step. Select then Integrate Existing Paper Office Database and enter the IP address of the new QNAP NAS. Confirm all entries by clicking on Check Information, Save and Continue. Of course, I have to select the security keys, so-called master keys which are queried for every database connection. I click Check and Continue. The connection to the new QNAP NAS database is now established and you can continue working with PaperOffice as usual. This concludes the workshop. If you would like to find out which additional functions PaperOffice has, visit our other videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay informed about the latest workshops, or visit our website. Thank you for watching.